Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris bringing it to you here from a lovely little Westlake Village, California. And I'm going to jump right in the charts from yesterday's discussion as Bitcoin still caught in a range here. And um, and then we'll get into some of the higher term time frames. So if we are going to get a break of the range um, and we're looking for something like this pops up here, makes a higher low, and that would be your opportunity to go long and then vice versa on the short side, uh, we'd be looking for a break at the 55, a retest and something like that. So where does that line up in the grand scheme of things? Well, let's take a look at some of the momentum oscillators here. Um, mo four hour, uh, four hour momentum. Did it just close? Did the four hour just close? It did indeed. So uh, not the picture perfect cross uh, and we're in the middle of the kind of, uh, we're not in the barrier zone, we're not in the bull zone. We are caught right in the middle once again. And just taking a look here um, from some of the momentum oscillators looking for perhaps a trend line uh, because you can use stochastics for a trend line. And I would guess that a break of, yeah, this kind of trend line uh, to the upside of the downside, probably going to catch the momentum on the next move. And let's take a look at the higher term time frames. And um, I mean, it looks like we are just trapped, trapped in the middle of the range. The dollar's going up. Stocks are finally popping up a little bit today. We'll look at those as well, but I think it's a good day. To look at the monthly time frame, and why is that? Well, uh, the month is closing, and so is the bi-monthly. So just getting rid of some of this, make the chart a little cleaner. That definitely looks like a massive higher low and a higher high on the monthly time frame has not quite hit the uh, extremity yet up there at 38,000. And the bigger push would be all the way up there. And if we take a look at BLX, remember the Bitcoin having, and this is kind of our overall target somewhere between 40 and 46,000. That's going to be right there probably between the uh, not 0.5 and the 618. If we use a candle body closing basis, that was based on a weekly time frame. Sorry, the weekly time frame uh, high to low, which I think is probably the best one to use for this kind of market. Not 0.5 in the 618. There's where the bull traps and the bear traps do come in. And uh, yep, all the people that went along here, um, you know, on this wick, poor, poor guys, uh, probably going to be happy to uh, get their funds back out of the market. And what is going on here? Well, I'll, I'll take a look in a minute at uh, some of the other coins. We will talk about Ethereum, but mainly I want to discuss Bitcoin on the higher term time frame. So monthly and higher. Um, and Let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, momentum is still to the upside as long as we're above 23,000. Uh, volatility is about to increase on the monthly. That looks good for continuation to me. Um, and, you know, can we get a backfill, you know, after the monthly closure and come back down to 30,500 or 31 or 32,000? I do think that uh, could certainly happen. And the way that uh, I was listening to Gareth Soloway yesterday talking about the stock market crashing 35%, uh, 35%. Sorry, I'm, I'm going to finish up on Bitcoin first. Um, so we took a look at the monthly um, and the bi-monthly. And you're probably going, why, why are you looking at this, Chris? Well, um, the higher the time frame the stronger the signal is. And with momentum crossing up from probably the lowest level ever in Bitcoin's history, um, all we want to do is see some volume follow through and uh, could be could be potentially um, 
a very, very, you know, interesting November. I think statistically speaking, um, if October was green, then November typically is green as well. So that, uh, that's something to keep your eyeballs on. And I guess that one is not going to go in my favor. So I am just going to let it go. Let it go. Uh, back on to the bi-monthly. So also, I'll bring up the secondary chart here. You can see on the bi-monthly, Stokes are about to cross, maybe uh, turn green. Um, what about the monthly? And we went over this some time ago as we got this cross the monthly Stoke cross here, the first time we flipped green in a very long time, that was a very good indicator that, hey, market probably going to continue upside and onwards, upside and onwards. Um, also notice the topside trolling ban uh, coming in here right at 40000 bucks. Looks like that wants to get tagged. Um, I would be interested to see... Uh, BTC one exclamation. Where are the futures? Where are the futures? That's the one I want. What that looks like on CMEs, uh, that looks like, yeah, I think continuation push up to 36.5. Um, you know, hard to judge it from here with uh, the way everything has been going. Oh, just keep moving the stop up. Keep moving the stop up, Chris. Good job. Good job. Anyways, um, back on to our lovely little chart here. And uh, the monthly Bollinger Band coming in at uh, 2700 for Ethereum. But we're talking about Bitcoin. So Definitely, as I said yesterday, I think Ethereum has more upside potentials here. Um, definitely more upside potentials. Why is that? Well, you can just see. I mean, if Bitcoin's going to go, Ethereum's probably going to go with it. And um, yeah, 2700 on Ethereum. That's good to know. Um, okay, last thing... Yeah, we, I think we covered it all. So in general, expen expecting some continuation going into November. However, I am of the belief that uh, if the stock market, if the stock market completely, you know, shoots the bed, if you know what I mean, then um, Bitcoin probably going to, um, you know, run into some headwinds unless the decoupling happens is the decoupling here i uh, i won't be quite sold on that until um, we see like a massive inversion stocks are still at all-time highs basically and um you know with the nasdaq closing below the bottom side trollinger band uh maybe that's why gareth is talking about uh, a bit of a downside move i would at least look for a little bit Lower on NASDAQ, maybe 13.7. And Dixie, what is our Dixie doing? Well, uh, he is just trudging along the road of happy destiny to the upside. And we know when the dollar goes up, typically risk assets go down. Uh, good idea to look at this on a monthly time frame as well. And you can see... We may cross up and flip green here on our momentum oscillator. I'm going to go back to my regular chart. It's a lot more pretty that way. And Dixie on the daily. Almost putting it in a bullish engulfing candle. And that would imply some continuation going into tomorrow. Uh, the monthly also... You know, we did have this longer term target up here at uh, 108. Uh, for Bitcoin's sake, I hope that doesn't happen. I hope that is not the case. Um, man, got smoked on that one. Anyways, uh, back into it. Um, 
that is where your 618 not 0.5 trap and we said below here good for bitcoin above here bad uh so call it you know the dollar is the harbinger of death and despair and when the dollar rears his ugly head upwards it is not typically the best thing for bitcoin but um you know i do think that um Bitcoin has a fighting chance to pull off a decoupling as you have guys like Larry Fink talking about Bitcoin in a positive light. Everybody in the hedge fund world talking about Bitcoin like it's the new gold. Uh, even I saw a clip of that guy. Um, what's his name? Uh, the gold guy who was such a Bitcoin booer. Um, off the top of my head, uh, Birch, not Birch Gold Group, Peter Schiff, that's his name, Peter Schiff, even Peter Schiff was just saying he's buying Bitcoin, he wants to own Bitcoin, something for the new digital age, and I just couldn't even believe it, it was pretty, pretty funny. Um, do we see anything on the buy monthly here? This is where uh, the traps typically happen but um, very similarly to the dollar if we pull this out a little bit uh, very similarly to sorry bitcoin right consolidating let's say that's bitcoin's range between 35 and 30,000 where we've been ranging for some time we've been talking about breakout retest and then continuation and if we saw something like that which is the breakout um Definitely. So two warning signs that Bitcoin, you know, may not have the happy trails and fluffy tails uh, for the rest of the year. If we start closing the dollar back above 109, that'll be a good indicator, especially on like a even a daily or a weekly time frame. Um, and we start to see NASDAQ. If we take out the lows on NASDAQ, um, this is completely fine. The two-month momentum remains to the upside above 11,000. So it's, I don't think we're going to close that one down. Uh, 14,596. So dancing on the edge for the uh, sell signal of a lifetime. So do we have bearish divergence? So would you call it one drive or two drives? Um, to me, it looks like it kind of played out already. Um but let's see on our oscillators. So what is bearish divergence when the price or hidden bearish divergence, should I say? Price is making a lower high. And if we mark off the RSI, so it's a little bit easier to see. Price is making a lower high right here and a lower high on the RSI. So would you call that bearish divergence? This is where the nuances uh, begin to come into play because definitely that is a lower high. But if you look at from an RSI perspective, you can see a higher high, a one drive of hidden bearish divergence where the price is making a lower high, the RSI is making a higher high. By the way, if you want to get a little treasure map for what is bullish and bearish divergence, you can head over to BitcoinAdvisors.com, go to our resource center and uh, print yourself out a little guide here. Um, one drive gets you a shot to the nine exponential. So hidden bearish divergence is in a downtrend price makes a lower high, the RSI makes a higher high. And there is another page to this. There it is. One drive down to the nine. And if you want to set up trading view and uh, join us in some trading on our discord group, feel free to uh, check out the links in the description below. There's a free tutorial on how to set up trading view. Um, and of course, and all that kind of fun stuff. But as you would imagine, um, you know, this, this drive, one drive to the nine. Okay. Maybe you call it two drives gets to the 21. As long as this 
you know, um, well, that is a lower high. So trend reversal on the monthly. If we cross down below 14,595, that's going to be a pretty darn good sell signal. A pretty darn good sell. And I would expect some more downside continuations and for the dollar uh, to play out to the upside in a historic fashion. So two warning signs to take away from this video today. On the monthly time frame, things are starting to look bearish for the uh, stock market. Um, NAS, or sorry, S&P will cross down today below four. Look at how they put it right on the edge, right on the edge. And, uh, you know, maybe it has something to do with the rates being so high. Um, and Powell, Powell tomorrow. Could you imagine having to be Jerome Powell giving another speech tomorrow, November 1st? He's going to talk about raising interest rates or not, why he's not going to raise interest rates. And he's going to talk right out the side of his mouth. Um, we know the, uh, the debt is just too high. So if they raise rates more, how are they going to pay the interest on the debt? I don't, I don't, I don't see how they can do it. Um, at the same time, if their mandate is to keep inflation at 2%, maybe they're just BSing, right? That's that like, like they, if they really cared about keeping inflation at 2%, they wouldn't print all that money in the first place. So what is the real priority? It's always this is um, save the stock market. And if the stock market comes down again, well, they're going to have to roll out the printing press. And that could be the catalyst that sends Bitcoin higher. So initially, stock market comes down. Uh, we get the pre Bitcoin halving, right? So we pump up to this area, get a 30% correction. Then Powell has to roll out the printing press, start printing a ton of money, lower the interest rates, and sends Bitcoin all the way up to the parabolic blow-off top target, which it typically does from the ultimate high to the ultimate low at 208,000. And I've been saying 180. 180 is kind of my zone, uh, but you know this could get all the way up to 250. And if you look at the last parabolic bull market from 3,000 to, what is that? 3,000 to 69,000. So, and just keep in mind these, these blow off tops, they get weaker over time. So we're not gonna expect, what is that, 69,000 divided by 3,000 a 23x, a 2,300, a 2,300% gain. I don't think we're going to see that on this one. And maybe we do. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I am wrong. But statistically speaking, so that run goes from 3,000 to 69,000. I don't care if you take it from here or there. The previous run went from $200, call it, call it 160 to 20,000. So just doing a little mental math here, that was a 11,500% gain versus a 2,300. So it missed it by about uh, 10x. It missed it by 10x, <clears throat> right? Um, 11,000 versus, okay, maybe that's 5x. So if we get about half the half the return of the last bull run from 3000 to 69 that was 2300 so where would a 10x take us from 15000 or call it a 1200x so doing a little mental math 2300% 2300 if we get half of that move during this run that would be 2300 divided by 2 1150. So um, from the low to the next high. Oh, look, look at that. Where is 1150? Right there. Right there at 200,000. Close enough is close enough. 
yeah, I think uh, if we get up there somewhere around 185,000, that is the 3618 fib. And could it get a little higher? Yeah, 230 possibly on a parabolic blow off top. How long does it typically take, right? From the low to the high. And what do you know? It coincides to happen right after the Bitcoin halving. What else happens right before the Bitcoin halving? A little bit of a pullback. It either happens before or after this one. In this case, we got the pullback after. Uh, pullback after the halving, which this doesn't look like much on the screen here, but that's 30% right there. Uh, this one, I would say, was before the halving, right? Uh, this one was before the having well i'm going on a rant today guys but you're getting a lot of good information make sure you smash the like button if you're enjoying it and uh, getting something out of this otherwise i'm just doing this for myself doing it for myself so that i have a good picture of what i want to do uh during the next bull phase and i guess at some point we'll discuss what altcoins and when to be in altcoins and my Ethereums are just rocketing to the moon here at the moment. I think I'll save for Ethereum for tomorrow, uh, but I will leave you with this idea. How long does it typically take from the low to the high? How many, how many weeks from, should we call that the low or this the low? The ultimate low. Yes, I'll, I'll call this the low. So that one took 36 weeks, sorry, 36 months, wow, uh, 36 months for that one. And a very, I mean, the markets aren't going to be exact, right? Uh, They're not going to be exact, but if we're taking the low, and what are these blue lines? I marked off one year prior to the Bitcoin halving. Um, and that's usually when the bull market starts. So that one took 36 months. This one started right before the halving. Oh, 35 months. This can't be, this can't be uh, that similar. 26 months. Where was 36? Right there. So... Gosh, if you got it for from two dollars up to you know, up to there, um, well, good for you, good for you, good for you, and maybe, maybe we start it back from here. I don't know the ultimate low, the ultimate low. So pull back. Yep, right before. Uh, no, that was a year prior. Okay, that would have been thirty-eight, thirty-eight from the ultimate low. Uh, to the high. So 36, so two years of bull party from the low to the high. And again, where does 36 bars come from here? 45 bars, 45 bars, 41, 40, 36. So if that was the ultimate low, November 2025. So how long do we have? How long do we have from, it's, it is, and by the way, happy Halloween. Hope you guys enjoy uh, some candy with your kids and whatnot. I know I will be walking around my neighborhood remembering the good old days. Um, anyways, needless to say, the month, November 2025, could be our parabolic blow off top month. Mark that one on your calendar and save the date because it'll come quicker than you expect. That's about how many, how many, how many months away is that? November 2025, 25 months. So we got about two more years of partying crypto and uh hopefully that's before they roll out the central bank digital currency and everything gets really crazy and i do think i am one to believe that actually we probably do have at least two years before uh that whole thing gets rolled out anyways 
I could be wrong, not financial advice, not a financial advisor. We're talking about magic internet money. So if you, if you enjoyed it, make sure you smash, smash that like button and uh, come back tomorrow. We'll, we'll get into it for the first day of November price action. Take care and have a blessed day.